Anyway, this is the New Uppsala podcast. We talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about, but it's really good stuff. Uh, between, I don't do intros, man. I just talk. Uh, as usual, there's three of us on here at the time. We got Rain Raven, Sivira Udafar, and myself, White Wolf. Um, today, it was decided like an hour ago that we're going to talk about uh, the concept of patron gods or goddesses or the patroness goddess uh, and the concept behind that with heathenry or overall what it is, I suppose. Benefits, cons, whatever we're trying to say anymore. <laughs> so yeah, so you, there, um, you brought this one up to, to kind of get it started. Uh, do you want to get started on it? Sure. Um... I had a friend at work. He, I was like, hey, dude, because I was trying to come up with ideas for the podcast. And I was like, hey, you're Christian. What would you ask a pagan? And he was like, okay. And we got into like this 30 minute to an hour long conversation about just random crap that he had questions about. But he was like, so in Christianity, we have the Almighty God. And I, okay. And he goes, do you guys have like an almighty God? And I was like, well, not really. No, we have a bunch of different gods and kind of explained polytheism and that kind of stuff to him. And I was like, but I guess some people do have like that one God that they follow more closely. to." I was like, I, we should talk about the patron God concept because it's, it's one of those things where we, we have these concepts, we have people that practice this way. And then you have people like me who I'll follow a God's path for a month, a year, whatever. And then I'll just change. And some people never actually follow a specific God path for any length of time. They just follow the heathen path. So I just thought that might be a good one to go over and where we all stand and our thoughts on it was, because I was like, you know what? This would be a lot of fun talking about this because it's one of those high visibility topics that. We get told all the time, well, I, my patron is here. And I'm like, yo, good for you. Have you talked to any of the other ones recently? And they all go, Whoa, why would I do that when I'm following? Yeah. You get what I mean, White Wolf, right? I'm sure we've done this before. I'm, I'm just watching you bro saw true out and just enjoying every second of it. You just keep doing you, man. <laughs> no. It was, just a, it was an interesting conversation, and I was like, well, I suppose some people do have that one patron god that they follow very closely to. I figured it was a good topic. You can speak. Woof. My connection was like kind of weird for a second. So I actually wasn't sure if I could speak. So, <laughs> I was like, maybe not. Maybe I don't. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good topic. It's like you said, like this does come up fairly often. Um, it's not one that is you really focused on teaching like our normal community, things like that, uh, because there's so many kind of connotations to it or uh, implications or whatever you want to call it. Um, sometimes there's a clout of doubt around this thing because I see it very monotheistic, Christian, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, you know, patron itself, um, there's patron, patronesses for the female one. It's not matron. Don't even get it to be started on that shit. Um, it's weird. Uh, but originally, and I tried to get some stuff together, uh, the concept of the word itself is actually to patronize. Now, Oftentimes, when you say patronizing, it's negative, right? But to patronize actually is to help someone and what is it, betray the cloud of authority or some of that effect. So it is a god that you essentially want to have patronize you. So it's helping. It may feel demoralizing because they're talking to you like a fucking child, but it is patronizing to do. So patron or uh, patroness come from the concept of somebody helping you or like, Somebody guarding, protecting, helping, and so that sort of sense. Um, that was in 14 or 13th century when it first came out, and it was Latin for, and I had it, and I lost it, but it's Latin for some shit. Um, then it just means protector or defender. 
And so that's why patron comes from. So a lot of people claim patron gods, especially even, no, not, not just heathen, but like uh, it was like Catholicism or whatever else, the patron saint of this, patron saint of that. Um, I hope that's the right religion, or I'm going to get so much hate. But um, so that's what it comes from. Each one of them is a different protector for a different thing right it's like it's going through all of our gods and goddesses and using them as patrons now nowadays when someone says patron god generally they're referring to one or goddess uh referring to one deity and that's it that's their loyalty not the gods or goddesses loyalty to them so patron nowadays is very singular where in a lot of different religions and beliefs patron is multi multi gods saints goddesses whatever you want to have it um, so it, it is a different concept. I think there's a lot of pros and cons to each of it. And Ray Raven, what do you think? So my biggest thing that I've like seen within the heathen community and with baby heathens as well, when they're talking about patron gods, they're like they're trying to get a monotheism aspect out of a polytheistic religion. They're trying to still feel like when they believed in the mono, um, they were like, oh, I need to believe in one, even though in polytheistic we have like 43 in the Norse pantheon, somewhere around there. Um, they're still trying to get that grasp because that's the, the best way to uh, worship a deity in their aspect. Um, for myself, I don't really, I see the patron as not as like a soul worshiper, but as a, this is the God that I have the best relationship with. Because most patroness that I've seen, they still worship the other gods, but they heavily worship one to, because they have the best relationship. And that's, that's what I've seen from it. Yeah, no, and I think it's I think it's kind of an e easy adaptation to have that concept coming from a non-heathen to a heathen faith or society or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, you're so used to it, kind of what you said, it's like just melding one into the other. Mm -hmm. They're looking to have a broader religious faith or view of that, but they're still kind of anchoring on one god or goddess for the comfort they want to have that same like relationship they do with one a religion that you know, shares just one god so i think it's a good point that it's them conforming but also expanding their their mind and i mean i i i'm all for or against I, it's everybody's personal journey um i do have a god for sure that i am more accustomed to dealing with attune with whatever you want to call it um which has helped me out a lot and in some ways it really hasn't um so it is it's a very it's a kind of a balancing act if you choose or find your way to a god or goddess it's it's a balancing act to make sure that what you're gaining from it isn't hindering what you could be learning from somebody else so that was actually the next thing that i was going to bring up because that happens a lot where somebody will go well here's my patron Okay, sweet. When's the last time you talked to Freya? Or when's the last time you focused on a different aspect of what we do? They'll go, well, I haven't. As blah, 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 whatever reason. I think my favorite one thus far, and I don't say this to hurt feelings, because I know eventually this individual is going to be watching these. Um, yeah. Sorry, dude. Yeah, sorry, bro. <laughs> you put it on. I won't say your name, but... You're getting put on blast. Um, he said something along the lines of, well, my patron's tier. Why would I give an offering to any of the other gods? So I immediately, like, backed up. I was like, hold the fuck up. He was like, well, I do occasionally, but I always give one to tier as well, and he normally gets the lion's share of whatever it is. And I was like, oh, my God. Why? <laughs> and we had a little educational moment there where... You can have a patron, by all means. I don't have an issue with that. But as White Wolf said, what about the other ones? Are you learning from them too? Um, so I had to have this conversation with this individual, and I was like, 
why would you not offer them anything? Do you think Tyr would be upset if you went to Thor for strength in some aspect? Why would he be mad if you're going to somebody else to be like, hey, I need your help specifically? Look at the way Thor asked here for help with the cauldron. When they were brewing in Aegir's Hall, and they were like, well, we need this big-ass cauldron. Tyr was like, cool. I don't need somebody to carry this shit. Thor, you want to come help me out? So, yeah, they helped each other. It was never a, well, my followers do this, and fuck you. No, get out of here. Maybe Loki. But anyways, um, I digress. We can talk about Loki later. All right, well, it'll be fun. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing up the bad side of having a patron and the thing oh, I completely missed. I, I live the bad side of having a patron. Ain't nothing you're going to say to me that I don't know already, buddy. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's not to you, but I'm just going to bring it up because I know it makes you squirm a little bit. Yeah. And it's a good it's... educational moment. No, it's mainly just good whole... one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> My whole life's an educational moment for people. It's bullshit. <laughs> I think all of ours I'm like is... a life lesson, but it's my whole fucking life. Like, it probably with crayons, bud. Yeah. He wasn't marine. He wasn't a marine. He didn't play with. <laughs> no, he played with crayons, but he didn't eat them. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can color in the lines. <laughs> I was army. <laughs> can you color in the lines? Yeah, if I choose to. Uh, here you go. I mean, he got a lot of degree for art, so. I mean, do like watercolors, like don't whatever. <laughs> oh, on this topic of watercolors, like off topic, I was thinking about getting a, like a tattoo of a shark, right. like a watercolor shark tattoo. Those are good. If you get them right, they're awesome. I have a, a few people in Utah that do really good watercolor tattoos. I don't know up here though. Yeah, wow. I, I was just looking, and it was a cool concept, and I was like. Is that, like I so love you sharks. Can Google it if you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, do you not no, know? What, it it okay, looks okay. Like water painting. Like I've seen Ink Master, you assholes. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is a tattoo. <laughs> Anyways, I thought they just did this in prison camps. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> we call it basic training, but yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I was just like, my brain went, "How do you watercolor a shark?" Because they're just gray and white, and I wanted to understand where the watercolor came into that. Well, you see, they live in the water. Yeah. That's all I got. That's, that, <laughs> that was kind of the aspect. So, the way it, like, in my head, I formatted it, it's going to be like looking down on a shark, and it's going to be swimming, and it's going to have the watercolor effect of, like, the reflection and all Ooh, that. That'd be cool. Can you, like, have like, the glint of the sun? Shining down like that wave break. That's yeah, cool. that's, okay. that, that was like what I'm envisioning. Okay. I just don't know where I want it. Okay, I get it now. I was yeah. just like, how do you watercolor a shark without making it gray and white? Yeah, you can native or uh, like native space the watercolor one. So it's an underwater one, whatever else, or just the shark itself. You would do blue watercolor around the shape of it, and then do a gray for the, like part of the body, but not the whole thing. So it would be like. The watercolors around the subject matter, not the subject matter itself, mm -hmm. and having that like underwater effect. Shark news. Did you see that they found a freaking megalodon like off the coast of Mexico or some shit like that? No. With satellite imagery, and it's like over 70 feet long because they took the resolution and put a bus next to it. Was this uh, from the movie set of the Meg? No. They just <laughs> let it in the water, scare the fuck out of some Russians in a sub somewhere. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is that? No, they took like satellite imagery over a certain part of the Gulf of Mexico. I, I think that's where it was. Um, it's part of no, the it U.S. Probably... defense budget to offset from uh, <laughs> submarines from foreign yeah, allies. Just a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> So goddamn no, I, have not, I haven't seen that in the news. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Homeland Security yeah. decided to spend billions of dollars for scientists to recreate a megalodon for the defense of the United States. I went and throw a pass. With all of our experience with the DOD, I would not even be surprised. I if 
when I was at dog handler school down in Texas, uh, dog. yeah, there was a story of a, like a four star general, like asked and spent money to see if a dog could smell odor in a vacuum, like a vacuumed room. That sounds like the dog would die. Well, yeah, because all the air would be sucked out. Yeah. So. I think that's animal cruelty. PETA, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Just because you we went to school do doesn't mean you're smart. I just know somebody from PETA is going to be like, they put a dog in a fucking you just outed. <laughs> that face. So hard, dude. I just said DOD. You know, DOD does a lot of messed up stuff. He's dyslexic. It could be DDO, probably. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be three O's. He could have been. Not Whoa. <laughs> like, what the fuck is O's? <laughs> three O's. Whoa. <laughs> Dead dog. Holy shit. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, whoa, it's, a, whoa. it's quick. <laughs> it's like 10 O's. That's ooh, three O's. That's it. <laughs> Speaking of our ADHD bullshit, that was fun. <laughs> Man, you want to go back on topic? I'm just kidding. Usually, I'm the one that I'm the one that holds us all together. But I don't know. No, you know what? Let's let's take the shark thing. Let's no, no, take no, the no, dog no, no, thing. No, 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 okay, no. Hold no, on, no, no. hold on, hold on. Pump the He's gonna try and start to go back. <laughs> hey. I said something about sharks, so I'm just going to use this one. Say your patron's Njord. Njord and Scotty don't necessarily have a great relationship. Not at all. I was like, not. Okay. So if your patron's Njord, and you go and camping up the mountains or skiing or something like that, do you still honor Scotty? Or is that communication broken? Is that no longer there? It's like having divorced parents. You love the one you're with until you're not with them anymore. Not a you know how that works, bro. Explain to me how you know that works. What? Explain to me how you know that works. I don't know what you're talking about. I do. And you do too. Do we have to spell it out? Can you spell it out? <laughs> Currently, no. Probably, it's a lot of, a lot of letters. Yeah, it would be a lot of letters. Hmm. So, I don't know. How do you guys handle it when someone does in the heathen world and what we deal with our students or? Just bystanders, jail populace on them asking if they should take a patron or a patroness. Like, if they're like, I feel a two minute or akin to the most common one ever out it. Oh my gosh. Um, let's say, like, Freya. You know, what, what would you guys say in that, in that situation if you're trying to grow a heathen? Okay. Uh, today we'll, we'll run with that one because that one's pretty common. How many names does he have? That would be my first question out the gate. Was how many names does Odin go by? There's a shit ton. I was like, I don't know if there's a hard number because yeah. you just wake up and, and be platypus bear and such. You've been watching Avatar The Last Airbender. Nice. Dude, it's been like 10 years. That's the wrong part about what's happening in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just started asking questions and trying to see where that relationship actually sits. Like, if they are... took Odin as a patron, where's the last book you read outside of our culture? Have you seen more of the world? Have you discovered more cultures? Learned of more cultures? Have you read things outside of what you know? 
are you willing to learn from people that you may not learn from normally? Just questions like that. Because if you're going to take a patron normally, they will start to emulate their patron or patroness of choice. So with Odin in particular, it'd be, when's the last time you read a book on Hindu beliefs? When's the last time you discovered a new culture or learned about a new culture? So yours is essentially having them verify that they have that bond. Um, let's say they answer the questions to your satisfaction. Would you then encourage them to take a patron? Or what, what does that look like if they make back and they're like, yeah, this, no, yeah, oh, shit, that's right. No, no, no. Yeah, sorry, let me clarify. If somebody walked up to me and said, hi, my name is blah, 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 and I think Odin's my patron and I've practiced this way for so long, I'm just trying to gauge where that relationship's at in order to gauge how I can help them or maybe slowly slide them in a different direction if need be. If that relationship has come to a complete standstill and they're not comfortable there anymore and they're coming to me saying, well, I need help with this because I don't know what's going on, cool. Let's see where that relationship's at and try and figure out where you're going and see if you need to continue on this path or maybe shift a little bit and go after something different. And that's the other thing that I'll bring up later is you can change your patron. It's okay. Super weird. Yeah, it's crazy, man. But... Blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? But no, that... Um, that my course of action is trying to figure out where they're at. And, and normally when people come to the Gothar, they're something's either wrong or they're looking for an answer or looking for guidance in some way. So that's instantly where my brain went was, okay, something's either going weird, W-Y-R-D, or something is going correctly and they just wanted to talk about it or maybe they have some questions. So I, that would be my initial thing is, okay, sweet. Where are you at with all that? so that I can gauge how to help them best in the future, if they even need the help. Sometimes I just like, yep, that's what I do. And you're like, all right, cool. Whatever. Rain Rain, what about you? If, uh, if you had some baby heathen or Christian or anybody I'd come up and ask you about patronage and say, oh, I feel this way towards a god or goddess, whatever else, well, what's your approach on that? Mine, and mine would be more biased due to like I think you're cutting off a, a relationship from all of the other potential gods goddesses that could be um coming to you like if you're like too far as a point of Nord you're like oh I'm really into fishing what's the what's the um the deity that governs fishing or like uh, you're a professional fisherman, whatever. <clears throat> then um, you try to grow that relationship to better yourself in an aspect, whether it's competition, whether it's financial, if it's a business or anything like that. That's where I see like patronage or purely if they, if their natures and like their ideals match then that's where i see patronage as well but if you're worshiping nord and your patrons nord then like ufar's point if you go up in the mountains and it's winter and you know nord's not going to help you up in the mountains who is it's going to be scotty now if it's hun then you got uler but if you're camping or anything like that you got scotty that's how I see it. Um, but then at the same point, my, my viewpoint of patronage, it's who I have the best relationship with. And that's it. That's how I would explain it to them. We're a polytheistic cool. religion and, you know, we're mon we're not monotheism. You know, you can highly worship one, but you can't just only worship one. 
I think that's difficult for a lot of people. I mean, they can believe in many, but they only follow the one or the few, whatever else. Um, and especially, you know, in our position, like in everyday life, for a lot of humans, it, that's not too much of an issue. They don't run into too many theoretical concepts or problems. They run into that questions them. But in our position, where you're more specified to help everyone, I mean, our in our instances, like even if I have a patron god or goddess or patroness. And someone asked me to do a blowout against one that is basically the polar opposite, Scotty to Njord and vice versa. Like, as a Gothi, now are you doing it? One, are you doing it all? Two, are you giving that god or goddess the proper, you know, uh, accom or accolades and respect that they deserve? Um, it becomes, it can become a very quick, slippery slope into you'll do for people things you won't do for people based off your own bias based off your following of the single so yeah it's it's definitely a slippery slope either way um i've been on both sides of it many times with what i do um but it's i mean it's kind of what you said like when, when you're there they're not gonna be able to help you you know in some situations they're just not as accessible, nor would they ever want to go fucking there ever and they'll get. You could be your biggest bro ha and be in Scotty's territory. He's like, I'm not going there. Fuck you. You figure it out. I'm not going that shit. And you're like, yeah, but we're besties. He's like, yeah, you best to get your ass out of there. I'm not helping you. Well, there is even a story when it comes to Nord and Scotty, and that's why they ended up getting a divorce was because he was completely unhappy being away from the sea and the calm water. Same thing with Scotty. She hated being at, on the beach. She loved the mountains and the high terrain and all that. So that's why they ended up getting a divorce. It was, a, you know, why would Nord go with you to the mountains when he wouldn't, like he went there and hated every second of it when he was with his wife? I just... I agree. I just love how we turned Njord over the last two or three calls into like the surfer dude of our gods. Like you bestie get your ass out. What are you talking about? He's definitely the uh what is it uh who's the all right all right all right guy? Uh, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the Matthew McConaughey of the gods for sure. <laughs> See, like, uh, I live way too close to the ocean. Somehow I'm going to drown in the next like 48 hours. <laughs> Me and Jordan have our own issues from when I was down in Florida. Like, nope. We, we quietly respect each other from opposite sides. I stay on the shore. He stays out there and we're good. Um, but no, I just now I will forever picture Njord as a dude in fucking board shorts and flip flops walking down the beach, just going, What's up, bro? Like this straight up. And like, if, and I'm not saying this, but, and if I'm not saying this, but if I, I'm if I had it. to, like, if someone had a gun to me and was like, Who is the most? Or who do you have the best relationship with? Mine's going to be Nord. Me and him share a lot of commonalities. and But it's not to the point where he's my patron. And, you know, I mean, last episode, if we ended up, if I ended up dying and if I could pick somewhere, it would be his hall. No, then. But that's just because I feel we have the best relationship out of any other any other of the gods but that doesn't mean i'm gonna solely idolize nord i'm gonna still keep the communi the train of communication open for any other deity that could have a possible learning message for me for my for my growth that's how i see it 100 percent. that that's really what i wanted to nail home with this is you can follow a path, but not be completely separated from anything else. Me and White Wolf had a conversation. I think Rain Raven was actually there probably about a year ago now, where we were talking about this in the school and having patrons. And for last time, 
uh, we kind of all laid out that, yeah, I follow Vidar pretty closely. Why Wolf follows Heimdall fairly closely, and obviously Ran Raven follows New York fairly closely. And I remember about a year ago, we were on this topic, and White Wolf, you can deny it all you want, but you and Loki do not get along. All. Real but what? You don't get along at all. Oh, I won't deny that ever. Okay. But do you remember this conversation where you were like, nope, I hate him, I'm never doing that shit again, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but you're an artist. What about Loki's creativity? That that what inspiration. What's that? And you're like, wow, I've never heard of that before. And I was like, no shit, because you've sworn him off like he's a fucking plague because of your relationship with Heimdall. And you were like, well, that's not why. It's just a big reason. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's not for the reason that he <laughs> say stays yeah. away from Loki at all. I think we both, we all know, like, what it is, but I don't want to disclose it. Because if he's not comfortable. I don't even, I don't even know which part. I don't care. I'm an open book. I, was it the arm thing or the other things? What do we, like, I don't, like, there's I don't, a lot of things. That I don't know if the me. arm thing's connected. All I know, all I know is, is you no, worshipped him and then a bunch of shit happened literally 24 hours later. Yeah, and it wasn't that I like was like, "Bruh, I'm a low." Blah. I just gave him a shot, like you know, I. It's it's very normal. I'll just say that because it might not be for everyone to demonize Loki because it's Loki, right? And so people stay away from it. But like, I did that too, and I was like, "This is stupid." Like, I'm just basically bastardizing this this entity without even approaching it or knowing what it's like. And so, okay, I'll do this like hard, respectful. You know, we'll say by the book as reasonable as I can get to make sure I was doing what I could look up uh, what the things that are included, what you know, compliments Loki, all these things like just you know, just blowing smoke up his ass. Um, and I went through with it. I, you know, I wanted to explore that thing, and you know, there wasn't anything that's not like I did that and I was struck by lightning or some shit. Um, but uh, within about 48 hours, I found myself in a very bad state of mind, being that it was just absolute chaos in my brain through alcohol and, and adrenaline and I had and by the end of that same night I had five felonies pushed against me uh, I was incarcerated immediately before they could take me to jail I had to go to the hospital because there was so much blood coming out of me um, I blew some blood all over a cop, so he had to go with me to make sure I didn't have AIDS or something so that he could live a normal life. He's fine. We're fine. It was I got a clean bill of health. That was a cool thing out of it, and that's about it. Um, and, like, all these things. So I had to go to the hospital, handcuffed to a gurney. It was pretty fun. Like, I had a time in my life. I talked to a lot of people. So, and then after that, they were like, and now prison. Like, it was very, like... <laughs> So, I'm going to ask this, and I want your genuine, like, honest answer. How much did you grow from that situation, though? Oh, yeah, like, I don't like Loki now. Um, but outside of that, no, it was huge. It was a big defining factor. Um, honestly, it got me to a point in my life where like, it wasn't, it was a lot of things that I did, I'll, you know, purposefully or allegedly on purpose due to what happened that got me into more trouble than it could have been. It could have been just being drunk, walking around like an idiot, right? But I chose things to help other people, or I thought um, to help other people, that then escalated the situation to a worse time for me. So, like, I, the inherent, the initial reaction, the initial thing I did, terrible, don't do it. Um, the big bunch of add-ons were actually more deliberate in the sense of me helping, thinking I was helping somebody else or, you know, doing something in some falsified honor or justice system in my own brain. Um, and it has nothing to do, I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, Loki did it. Uh, I absolutely did it. It was knuck and futz. There's footage. Um, but outside of that, 
Um, that happened within 24 to 48 hours of, of me just knuckling down one day, and I've always kind of been, you know, like, Team Heimdall, whatever the fuck. Um, but then I, like, really knuckled down. I was like, look, I'm not giving Loki a chance. I need to explore these other options. Like, I have to know what's going on, because change is Loki. Change is good. Promotions, demotions, unemployment, and riches. Like, all sorts of crap is good, um, which is change. And so I'm like, look, I gotta give it a shot, and I did that, and then the next 48 hours, I just was a jackass society, and I was like, fuck that guy. And that was kind of my justification for it. Now, I do know that because of that, I miss out on some things. I don't, I don't not do the rituals that demand it, or the bloats or stumbles, or whatever they want around it. I'm not like, nope, I'm not going near that. Fuck that shit. I'm a little more cautious and I'm much more wary about it. Um, and then oftentimes if I have another guilty around me, I almost encourage them to ask the other one as, outside of me. Um, but it's, it's kind of where I fell with that, with that ladder. So a lot of people are like, oh, you're so chaotic. Like you're way more tuned to Loki. And I don't mean to be chaotic. It's just in my nature. But it's not where I feel I am. Like it, it makes sense on either side of it. But I'd rather be drinking on top of a cliff and telling stories and watching shit than I would be in there instigating shit. And I think that's my difference. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I like where you go with it because my original question was how much did you grow from that initial chaos though? And I would say personally, from hearing the stories, from knowing you for as long as I've known you now, you grew a lot in between those times. And it was probably mostly because of the chaos that was instigated by that one simple outreach that you did saying, all right, here's your chance. But you came out better for it, honestly. Well, full Loki that night. <laughs> I think, like, the basis of his question, and this is where I, my initial, like, thought went, is... How does, how, what's Loki's nature? All right, if he is chaos, he is, you know, the trickster god, you know, that's what people call him. Um, how would he teach me? He would obviously try to make, a, uh, make my life more chaotic as trying to teach me something. And when White Wolf was telling the story, I was like, in my head, he just, described Loki's entire life. He was chill, he created a bunch of chaos, oh. <laughs> and then he got locked up. Don't say it like that. Don't say it like that. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I, think yeah. I, I think I'm the first one to make that connection. I think you are. Really the door is getting knocked on him, say who's there it's gonna be he's gonna say rig and i'm gonna get my ass kicked by hand all night <laughs> no i think like that would be that was loki teaching you or you know this was him extending his hand it was like oh okay we don't have this connection let's give you a taste of what i can be and then hey, you hey, didn't honestly, you didn't like the taste you were like that is too like sour. Chaos. No, I don't want that. <laughs> but in the end, like, as Ufar said, you grew from it, and that's all we can ask for when we're worshipping a god, giving an offering, giving a sacrifice. It's a moment of grow. I mean, my favorite way of worshipping and how I encourage others, it's ask the gods not to help you, do a task. Don't ask them to help chop wood. Ask them for the motivation and the drive to go chop the wood. So I See, can do I my own growing. Okay. See, I do that a little bit differently. Um, and I think me and Y Wolf agreed on this a while back. I don't ask for help in any way. I don't ask for the motivation. I don't, nope. I say, witness this, watch me, let me prove my whatever, 
whatever I'm doing, whether it's, I use weightlifting as an example all the time. Um, when I go to the gym, be like, all right, I'm going for my PR. Tweet. Thor, watch this. In honor of you, in honor of myself, to gain my own honor in this world, I'm going to put myself out there. And if he decides to help, go. If I fail miserably, cool. But my point is, all I would ask for them to do is to witness, just to see what I'm trying to accomplish and what my drive actually is. So, and that's, that's me personally. I, I know me and Wyatt have had this conversation before, and I don't remember exactly if we were on the exact same page or if it was just Probably. similar. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, that's my approach to it is watch this. Mm-hmm. Hold my beer, watch this shit, because I'm about to go crazy. And that's always been my approach to how I honor the gods and how I push for their assistance, per se, if you will, yep. is watch this. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a good way of doing it. <clears throat> you know, we always kind of, or I try and say all the time, um, you know, the gods are more like siblings than they are deities. So, like, if you want your big brother to notice or whatever else, like, you want to show off, you want to catch his attention, you want to do these things for siblings, whatever else. You want to have that mutual respect and the hope that they reach out every now and then as much as you all have that, that same bond. Uh, so a lot of times people, like we say pray, and you know I've read that pray means a lot of things, but one is to beg. And so like we don't want to beg. Like you wouldn't beg your big brother, or you probably would if something's happening, but like it's not going to get respect. You're going to do it, and they're going to be like, you pathetic little worm, go away. Um, so, big brother, help. You know, this bitch is keep on punching me and beating me up. Please help me. Yeah, bro, no. no, I don't think it's the right <laughs> <laughs> different yeah. type of relationship oh. not a good one that's not a way <laughs> no but uh even with the the dance everything that happened with it <clears throat> i mean the more you guys keep talking about it, the more i think about it is like even though it was a terrible experience with exploring other deity or uh, you know another another god it it actually helps me identify that behavior in other people now and i can see essentially extremism in a different view in what we're trying to accomplish so i see the young adrenaline filled freaking nos energy drink motherfucking bro you guys trying to do all this shit and they're just trying to start shit they're just trying to prove their like their bravado their manlyhood of bravado what the hell it is to to just be that thing when i'm watching it i get it because i didn't do that, that kind of a thing but i was on that same mentality of not only to see what you're pouring is like watch me do this it was more like watch me fuck this up kind of prove like some prowess that wasn't there or that i wanted to be there. It's so basically overcompensation of lack of knowledge is just that bravado that brings that chaos uh, so now i see new heathens veteran heathens whatever else and I can kind of pick up on some shit. They say some things, they do some things, and I'm almost more attuned to seeing that because I, I walk that line for a second, like a second, recognize the chaos that's in somebody else that I'm like, okay, we got to watch that shit. Like, and now I'm finding other ways to deal with it. So different coping mechanisms, whatever else, and that's the way I guide them from that experience is I see what their mind's at, what the path they're going on, and I try and segue that into a more productive path, having the same kind of release, but in a different sense. So it absolutely does help, because now I can, I have to pick up on people's shit. And now I feel like I can't. I mean, like how you said, it's making you a better guard. It's making you a better sentinel. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's you're able to see the chaos and see the warnings before anyone else will. So, in my wholehearted opinion, it was Loki reaching out to you, and it was a learning experience for a growing. It was not good in the normal sense. But it was. Him. I learned a lot of legal words. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> but wholeheartedly, Loki helped you out in a way that you weren't expecting, and that's purely Loki right there. And as a spoiler to me, escapades is 
I only came out with two felonies. There were like, roughly eight in total charged against me. So it wasn't just pure chaos. It was definitely like, a, and the judge actually liked me. There were just these 12 assholes in a booth that decided what actually happened. So well, the judge was pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was good. Like I, I didn't, I wholeheartedly, you know, took my sentencing, didn't lie, admitted my shit, um, exact behaviors, exactly, exact memories. I said, like I full on went in there, and I'm like, look. And the time I was thinking about Forsetti and Tear and everything with it, but it was mostly Forsetti setting on me because it's more the god of justice and you no know, that kind of a thing. Um, Tear's a little more honor than justice, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but for Seti, I walked in there, I'm like, look, like, they, I don't have a shot in hell here. Like, in my eyes, if I want to believe the, de- or the you know, the the patroness thing or the patron thing, I'd be like, Heimdall's watching, better fucking put, be good. Um, then I levied other gods, you know, tier for Seti, like that. And I'm like, look, I gotta trust the system. Um, I did a stupid thing. We're going to figure it out. And the judge recognized that. I was like, hey, you know what? This happened. Uh, in between those times, I did reach out to try to right my wrongs, um, try to do what I could for the community and that hole that I wronged. And, you know, they, they told the judge. I didn't tell the judge that. They reached out to him. They let him know. So he was very, very cool about it. Like, I 100% got what I deserved. But, like, he was very understanding in the sense that he, I was remorseful. I wasn't trying to bullshit. I never said not guilty this shit. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, I did that. Like, shit. That was nuts. And I'm like, what really happened is I actually went out that window and went over <laughs> there. And, like, it was a whole thing. It was just, I put on, like, a show for the cops. Um, but, no, I mean, and that's what I got out from it. When I went to that court or that courtroom, it kind of to see what it was our point. It was like worshiping Scotty and going to the ocean. I was like, well, Heimdall's not sitting behind this bench. Shit. Okay, what's up, Forsetti? How are you? And yeah. I went with that. You guys shift gears with it. But I don't know. And th- that's that's the big learning thing that I think, you know, yep. to tie it all together, I think this is what we're all coming to a conclusion of. You know, you can worship one god, but don't cut ties with another. White wolf. <laughs> 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 we have like what's what's the what's this we have supervised visits Loki and okay, okay. That, okay okay the good one um so i have a similar thing with your uh now that you've shared your story i'll share mine where i don't have a patron by any means but when i was down in florida i went paddleboard like kayak paddleboarding things out in the middle of the freaking ocean um down in florida down by fort walton beach area and I got out there and I paddled past where the drop off point is. And I just kind of stopped, like hard stop. I was like, hmm, something's fishy. And I remember looking over the side of the kayak, looking down into like pitch black. Like it just dropped off. I was like, hmm. I just kind of sat there for a second. And this was while I was. This is, oh, this is five years ago now. Um, I sat there and I went, all right. So, uh, Nord's either going to let me paddle back. I'm going to die right here. And there is, those are the only options I have. right. Now. So I remember I had, of all things, a monster energy drink. Great. <laughs> On the kayak with me. And I went, well, this is all I got for an offering right now, so we're going to roll with it. So I remember setting the paddle down, like, setting it down and pouring this monster energy drink, and I was like, I will never come back here. I won't do it again. Just let me go home. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just let me turn around. And I know a lot of people have, like, the fear of the ocean thing. And I'm not afraid of the ocean by any means, but at that moment, I was petrified beyond petrified of what was down there because it was just black and i swear i saw like swirling motion terrified shit out but that's where my relationship with new york kind of went to a you stay over there i'll stay over here we're good we don't need to talk to each other we're fine um recently it's gotten better and i've started to reach out and not so much the ocean aspect but a trading aspect with it but the only way i was capable of doing so was realizing 
I can't shut him out. And the reason that came about was I was talking to a guy in the Navy. He's like, yeah, I worship New York. Do you have any way that we can, can you help me make these offerings or do these things? And I was like, well, shit. And I kind of had to break that barrier of, I can't just not talk to him. I can't not be there. Um, so yeah, that was my breakdown with Njord was I was going to die in like less than a mile, less than a mile off the coast of Florida. At least that's how I felt. I there was two impactful things. One did happen, one didn't. One, you basically had salt to deter demons because you poured monster into the ocean, so you killed anything underneath you immediately. That's just straight poison. Oh, yeah. That's just toxic. Like, you just killed every shark, every coral reef. Like, it's dead. You just wiped right. out civilizations. Fuck the second thing that could have been done is instead of offering, you should have just, I was waiting for you to be like, so I shotgun that fucking monster and paddled my ass back in. <laughs> like, I was just like waiting for like the, all right, frat boy, what'd you do with that monster? <laughs> I was really it up and I dumped it the fuck out. That's, that's good for you. Terrible for the environment, but good for you. <laughs> it's just a little bit of good. Okay, it's off the coast of Florida. I'm sure there's enough cocaine in the water there that they'll be fine. <laughs> that or oil. I feel like a messed out version of like the Little Mermaid. <laughs> like there's like it's like a Scarface. Like instead of Trident or the the Poseidon, it's just Scarface with cocaine and the key, Florida Keys. <laughs> yeah, no, I tracked. No, but that that was my experience, and I had to break that stigma of not talking to him because I was like, what? As a Gothi, I don't really have a fucking choice right now because this guy just asked me for help with New York. Um, so I had to build that relationship back to a, okay, are you going to, and it was very cautious at first. Like, I was like, here's some salt water. Like, I know you have a lot of this, but <laughs> here. But it was just like very, very cautious at the beginning. I didn't know what was going to happen because that interaction killed that relationship. And now my wife keeps going, so when are we going back to the ocean? Because you've got shit to work out. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't, I don't need that. I don't want to <laughs> do that ever again. But he's, in my UPG sense of things, he's been reaching out in my meditations a lot. So I kind of have to rebuild that. And I feel like I hurt myself by not just staying where I was and conquering that fear of what I didn't know. And shutting shutting that door to New York because I think it hurt me personally in the long run with my business and my stuff that I do. I, I think it did. I think it hurt me a little bit. So now I'm trying to rebuild it when I never should have had that problem to begin with. So that's another side of having a patron versus not and following one is you may close a door on one that is the one that's going to help you later down the line, and now you're struggling to rebuild a relationship or to build a relationship that could have already been. I like to be very clear in saying that uh, I have zero regrets of having hung out my patron, and he's a boss-ass bitch, and I've been good ever since, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm fine. You do you, boo-boo. What were you going to say earlier, Rain Raven? What, was, what were you going with? I wasn't, like, I'm honestly trying to think of something to bring up. But I just want to hammer home that we're a polytheistic religion. It doesn't mean that we can't have a, a better relationship with one god than, a, than another. I agree with that. There, there. There's absolutely no reason you cannot follow one path over and over. So, for instance, at the moment, and for the last couple of years now, I have been very closely working with Vidar and aiming my vengeful states of things. I've, I've worked on that very, very closely for the last two years. Um, but I sense a change in that is coming here very shortly. And I'm going to have to reach out again and see where I need to go. 
that terrifies the hell out of me at the moment because I've gotten so comfortable in that relationship with Vidar that now saying shaking hands and walking out the door is going to be rough. Not that I can't go back there or not that I can't communicate with him ever again, but I need to make that change. And saying goodbye to that connection will be difficult for me. I know other people would probably have the same issue. I'm sure White Wolf would fucking lose his goddamn mind if he ever had to walk out the door with Heimdall. I would abhor the fallout, probably nuclear, of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I got, like, felonies when I like the guy, imagine. <laughs> but yeah, the, that one's... But there's no reason you can't change your path. You can change your patron. You can build a relationship in a different area, and that's okay. That is perfectly okay. I, that's the point I want to hammer home, is just because you have a patron doesn't mean you can't change. Your path is your path, and that path is going to lead you in a way that you may not recognize right now. Where you are right now is not where you're, where you're going to end up, I guess is the point. Especially as a baby heathen or new to our culture, our religion, our faith, whatever you want to call it. Shit's going to change. Um, guarantee it. You're going to have a different reaction to things than you did before. You're going to see things that you didn't see previously. It's, it's wild. So yeah, that's, I guess that's something I would want to hammer home is change it. If it's no longer productive for you, if you've stopped growing, if you've started to stagnate, maybe it's time to change it up. Cool. Um, so another question has existed, has been asked, will be asked again, but has been asked yet here. Um, what if someone... Okay, so for instance, if you are looking to walk away from one, you're not looking to start another one, but you're basically going back to the dating world. How does one, as a heathen, reach out to a god or goddess to discover that path, right? So let's say someone says, how do I, how do I know? And if I do, how do I know? I, how do I get a patron or patroness? Like, what do I have to do to see if that's a thing for me or if that's just not a thing for me? Because eventually you're going to want to explore all facets of heathenry, of your faith, and regardless of what it is, and explore these different things. So whether, it's, whether it's taking your own namesake, whether it's tying a patron god or a patroness, um, no matter what it is, it could be anything from you know the lightest things in the world to like trying blood magic shit. So you're going to want to explore these possibilities. So if someone asks you how to explore these, what would be like? What would be your approach, uh, Rain Raven, if, if someone asks you how they could find a patron or a patroness, if that makes sense? So, <laughs> my answer would be just build a relationship and see where it goes. It, it, you brought up a really good point of how it's going to be like you're dating, you're you're working the relationship, you're fostering the relationship, you know, you're going to have the honeymoon phase, but at some point I'm really hammering home the dating aspect as Ufar is uh, laughing and dying. It's fucking awesome. I've never put it that way, but it's, it makes sense. So I'm just like, yeah, my, God right now. My, my screen, I, I don't know if it's my, I'm having some technical shit. I can't even see Sigurd Ufar, so I can't see his reaction to this. So it, it makes me happy that you said he's laughing because I literally <laughs> can't see and I'm glad he's not like you and pissed. Oh, <laughs> what? No, I'm, I'm laughing because I was like, yeah, you're dating a god. Deal with it. And that that's how I look at it. You know, you open up and you're like, hey, uh, Thor, what's up? Um, you know, here's an offering. Uh, you know, you're the protector of Midgard. I want to thank you for that. You know, you're, you're keeping my home safe and not even asking for anything in return. And I'm going to just give you something and worship you in that aspect. Now, I don't know 
on the top of my head and I've never had to experience figuring out a patron god. So I can't really answer that from an edu- an experience standpoint. So just see where the relationship goes and if you get the feeling that both of you come to the same conclusion, roll with it. And then when it's about to end, don't say goodbye, say see you next time. Yeah. Um so I've done this once already. Um, during when I was training to become a Gothi, I was following Odin as closely as I could. I tried my best to emulate and be as close as I could to that. And then when I took my oath, I had a lot of anger towards people that I perceived had wronged. So I reached out to, after I had closed that door temporarily with Odin, not necessarily cut him out, but closed the door saying, I've learned what I needed to right now. I appreciate you, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. But I need to go venture venture out again. And that conversation, UPG, was great. Because it was like, go away. Shoot, I'm done with you anyways. Poof. Uh, he was like, go wander. Do your thing. You're good now. Um, but when I realized that I had a lot of those vengeful thoughts, and I was like, who's the god of vengeance? Like, genuinely, god of vengeance. And a lot of people say that Vali, with the whole Baldur slaying and stuff, but I don't think he was a god of vengeance per se, except for in that moment. Vidar, however, is known as the silent god and the god of vengeance. He doesn't say much, but during Ragnarok, he avenges Odin. So, the original Avenger. Um, we're going to get copyrighted. Uh, but... When I reached out to him, man. We'll just be careful legally and call it Captain Veter. There you go. Uh. It'll be a big, it'll be a big, like, flip-flop or sandal that he just yeah, yeah. The that breaks their jaws. Completely yeah. Um, no, it was... And building that relationship was rough at first because I was very, very vengeful. I was very angry with certain and throughout the last few years the last couple years in all reality I have come to terms with a lot of that it's not so much vengeance anymore as a calm if it comes up again handle it if it stays away and it's no longer an issue it's no longer an issue but learning to choose your battles is what I got out of my relationship with Vidar is going, does it really matter, dude? Like, did they harm you? Did they kill your family? And it was, so I got to temper that. But now going out again and realizing that that's about to shift with my life changing a little bit, a lot of it, um, I'm going to have to change that again. And I'm glad for the lessons that I learned, and I'm not closing that door permanently. We built that relationship, and it's pretty solid. I mean, those conversations are some of the most fun that I ever had during my meditations because they're the fuck around and find out kind of conversations, and it's great. He's kind of like talking to a veteran, like a combat vet, that that salty-ass motherfucker in the bar that you talk to, and he's like, yep, just fucking kill him, it's fine. You're like, whoa, 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 they stole my Pop-Tart, asshole. Calm down. He's like, nope, kill him. Just end it. I just ate so many Pop-Tarts before this call. <laughs> like, like, they were being brought to me while I was doing other, like... Hey, sorry, you said Pop-Tart. That was hilarious. I killed, I killed so many Pop-Tarts today. Did you? Proud of you. Yeah. S'mores. Popped up. I, I oh, killed s'mores and s'mores. Why the s'mores? I hate the like the, the dessert pop tarts are gross, dude. What is not a dessert pop tart? You're talking what? What is it? Is the traditional a, one is strawberry cream. What's a s'more? It's it's chocolate and marshmallow with a graham cracker. It's what a treat. 
It's a treat. Yeah, but what the fuck is a pop tart in any flavor that isn't a treat? It's breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> my right. fi- my go-to is the raspberry or the brown sugar ones. Brown sugar ones are solid, but the wild berry ones have to be my favorite. They're still treats, you assholes. They're no, breakfast. They're breakfast. It's a it's a uh, to go breakfast. Yeah, I'm aware of what a fucking pop tart is. I'm saying they're all snacks. Like, don't come at me saying that's a snack pop tart. I'm like dessert pop tarts, strawberry fucking frosted. That is the basic bitch, and that's still a snack. No, yeah, that's basic. I will hundred percent agree you with you on that. I think what he was talking about was. That's a dessert flavor. Like pop tart. They're all dessert flavors. Not, sugar is flavors. not a dessert. Yeah, I'm just gonna go eat a cup of brown sugar. Listen, you do you, man. <laughs> but like, whatever. What in the? It, uh, now that we're done arguing about fucking pop tarts, <laughs> we're nowhere near done being arguing about pop tarts. We'll move forward from the conversation. We're done for right now. I mean, we have about 20 minutes until okay. we're at the one and a half. Straight so, pop tarts. Let's do this shit. <laughs> um, but to answer White Wolf's question, now that I explained a little bit of backstory that I've done this before, this time I don't know exactly where I'm going to land. I don't know what exactly I'm working on. I mean, I have some ideas as to where I need to go next, but in all reality... I'm probably just going to shotgun blast through a meditation and go, who shows up? Who wants to talk? Who? What is your next step then? If you are open and admittedly like willing to take upon one relationship a little more than the other, not solely, but a little bit more, what are you doing to prepare yourself for that to come to you or vice versa right now i think well i know what i'm trying to do is find a place of neutrality i'm trying to get to a center point of balance for me where i can be receptive and not be tilted one way or another um at least to begin and where that scale shifts later is its own thing if say perchance it is loki i want to start somewhere in the middle so when the chaos kicks off i can attempt to get back there and try and balance it again or if it's who else to say it's thor and all of a sudden i go off on this crazy bodybuilding slash defensive posture this whole that side of a journey at least I start in the middle instead of running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to rebalance and trying my best to go one way or the other and trying to counter everything. And I would like to start somewhat balanced at the very least so that when those changes start to occur, because they will inevitably start to happen, at least then I'm semi prepared to go in any direction. I can. So that's financially, spiritually emotionally, all those things, physically, I'm trying to get it to a balance point before all that crazy starts to happen. Because it is crazy. Um, I know, White Wolf, you may or may not remember when you and Heimdall built that relationship, but the initial part of that relationship, from my experience, is fucking rough. When you're trying to align shit and get into a groove, Holy hell, you get tossed around like a rag doll. Because you're like, well, what is he act what is this god or goddess actually wanting from me? And you're like, well, maybe it's this. And nope, wasn't that. And now you're trying to counterbalance that side of it. And it's like, well, maybe it's this. And you go this direction. Not bad either. So what I'm trying to do is find that center point where I'm capable of shifting in any direction without too much chaos without destabilizing my life currently. So that that's kind of where my next step sits right now. And I've been working on that for about a month now and just trying to get everything leveled out as best I can before that next jump kicks it. 
I think. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, mean, I agree. Uh, right here, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, my thing, like, if where you're talking about and shifting focus and working on a relationship with a different deity, my thought process went as where can I grow? Where, what's my next step of growth? What is the next attribute, the next um, corner that needs to get shaved down to the well uh, rounded individual that I strive to be? That's how I see it. It's Vidar, uh, Odin taught you a lesson. Vidar taught you a lesson. You thanked him for it. And now you're working on to figure out a new corner to better shape yourself. Essentially, that's what it is. Um, but I don't know what that corner is. I don't know who's going to teach that lesson. And I have ideas of corners that I will, or in this, uh, whatever this example, there we go. Analogy. Cheap. Metaphor. Yeah, there you go. That's the word I was looking for. Analogy with the shaving down a corner thing. There's a few things that I want to fix about myself. There's a few pieces of who I am that I would like to round out a little bit. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I also kind of my wife works with the Norns fairly closely, so I've kind of given my life and went like. What happens, happens, dude. So I'm kind of leaning more towards whoever reaches out. That's the one that the Norns have. That that's the one where fate has intervened and said, this is where you're at right now, motherfucker. And that process could take however long. It, I'm not putting a timeline on anything. And I think that's another important thing. When you're reaching for a patron or a god to follow closely to or walk that path, don't try and put timelines on shit. Time doesn't work in those instances. Time is useless there. There's Time nothing. doesn't work. That too. Well, don't start that. God damn it. Uh, I mean, like, blanket overall, time doesn't work. I know. Um, but yeah, don't put a timeline on that relationship. It's just like if you were actually dating. You could date for two months and get married the third, or you could date for seven years and never get married. You don't know, so don't put timelines on things. Or never. Yeah, I, know, uh, I think it's big. You, you kind of mentioned something that's like, you know, you're trying to change for that next step, right? And I think mean, that's really big. I've had a lot of, even when I was at my last midsummer, um, I had some some guests join me after the fact um and it was non one not heathen not anything like he was just literally his friend brought him to me to ask questions about everything which is intense and I, it was like this, the single greatest moment of my life because i was sitting in the woods answering questions that i had no affront of i had no expectation which was super cool uh, but a big thing he asked he or the big thing he brought up was who he wanted to actually date. It was his, his single dating life. And he's like, well, I want a woman that's, like, going to be faithful. Is super good at this. And it didn't sound misogynistic, even though it absolutely was. Because um, it was like, I want to have some hot-ass chick, super faithful, can cook, like, has a passport, whatever, whatever, I talk about it. And I'm like, okay, like, I get, I get what you're saying here. Um, it, it's what everybody wants, right? Everyone wants this ideal thing. And so I said, okay, that's that's great. Like, where are you going on Friday night? And he's a big guy. He's like, oh, he's a big guy. He's like, yeah, I go to the club here. I go to the bar here. I'm like, okay. So, like, you're describing basically Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And do you think she's going to be hanging out in the tavern with Gaston? Or do you think she's going to be the library? So where are you going to find that next relationship that you want? Like, what are you doing to be good enough for, for that person, right? Like, you're changing yourself or trying to change yourself to be with the person you want to be with, right? If you were that 
person. If you loved books, sat in the library, loved to cook all this stuff, and you saw some guy come out of a bar drunk and start hitting on you, we'd be like, that's the guy for me. No, right? Absolutely not. So the way you said you're trying to change your habits, you're trying to change some things, you recognize some things in yourself, that's a big part of it. And that was a big thing that I got to talk to this, this one person about is growing himself into the person that that person wants to be with. You need to grow into the person that is that person. You want to be the person that that person wants to be with, right? Stable or crazy, like maybe you plan the whole year out in advance on a schedule calendar. Maybe you're the seat of your pants. Like everyone's forte is, or whatever is completely different. But you're trying to become more appealing to the ideal person that you want to be with. Now, that's not a specific individual, but that's the growth concept. So I do like that you said, you know, you recognize a lot of things. You need to go more neutrality. You came out of the gate high. Again, um, but you're trying to find that that middle ground now. You're growing yourself to fit not a god or goddess, but a personality trait, and see who comes at you with that personality. So I, th- I really like that. So I know we're getting close to our time. Um, so I kind of wanted to go over what the highlights were. And thanks, that is a big piece of it, why Wolf, it really is hitting that, trying to find a neutral point before you take off, um, before the changes start to happen and you start to fix the things that, or change the things that are directed towards you and learn those lessons. So first big takeaway, you guys can jump in whenever. So yeah, um, first big takeaway, you don't have to have a patron at all. Not necessary. Two, second big piece. If you do have a patron, that can change. And that's okay. Three, help me. Because I know there was more. Go ahead, Wolf. Again, patron God. What? What do you say? I like having a patron guy. I like having Heimdall. <laughs> oh. That's okay. So three, like, like and it's, not, it's not the norm, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. There's not one way to heathen. And then, four. yeah, go on number four. Four. Robert, you got another one? Uh, Mine would be, if you have a patron god, doesn't mean you can't have a relationship with others. Okay. And the fifth one that's that we just finished up. The growth conversation. What? I'll say the growth conversation. The be, growth or be neutral. Yeah. Be, yourself. be Yeah. Be what you want, what you think the other person deserves. Right? As good as you want to be, if you think they deserve better, you should start being better. So, like it's not some deprecation thing. It's not like I'm always trying to please this person, but it's a where can I tighten my reins? Where can I clean up my slop? Like, what am I doing to have these minor changes that have a big effect on wanting to have this person, God, goddess in my life that would be appealing? Right. So, in essence, if you are seeking out a patron, if you are seeking out that relationship to follow a certain path, prepare yourself. Don't just sit there and go, well, I'm starting this now and just go for it because I promise you that'll be a rougher transition than you realize or that you ever anticipated. So try and prepare yourself for it. Um, yeah. Those would be the big five takeaways that I would take from this one is it's okay to have a patron. It's okay not to. It's okay for that to change. Prepare yourself, in essence, before that. And there's no right way to do this. It's your own path. Yeah, and we always encourage people, find a Gothi, ask a Gothi, whatever else. But to those that are listening that are Gothar, be open because some are very 
very set in their ways. Some are not. Some are for and against patrons, whatever else. Um, be to the question, not don't be as assertive with the answer. Like, explore the question for what it is, because that question, while you may have answered a thousand times before, from an individual, it's their first time hearing it, asking it, having the nerve to answer it. If you ask it, or if you answer it really quick off the bat and seem patronizing, that's not the patron they want to figure out. Patronizing is attention, but it is demoralizing at the same time. So you want to have that balance of saying, here's what this is, here's what this is, whatever else. You'll have an answer for them, but slow down on your answer and really think. Try to study the person as if you just drew them as a room. Like You have to explore this human being. And you can't do that in five seconds, but you have to give it a shot. You can't have a blanket response to one answer. I can't have a blanket response to Loki, nor can I to Heimdall. It's not my call. It's not their call. It's all of the Asiatic goddesses, gods, and whatever else you want to call them call. So when someone asks you a question, don't knee-jerk. Really invest, even momentarily, in that human being and try and pull something from them. Pull them and that answer out of them as if you're pulling a room. Like, every individual is different. Every room is different. Every thing, contract, everything will be a simple question. I'm not going to give them a simple answer. I'm going to look at them. I'm going to try and figure them out as best as possible. I'm not going to put them on freaking stand while I'm staring at their face. But I'm going to try and find out what this person is. I will try my best to single them out, create a space of my own mentality, and pull the answer out of them just like I'm pulling a rune out of my back. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask a religious leader of any kind. Um, if they're worth their weight in salt, they'll give you the time that's necessary and the respect that that question deserves. So it took a lot, it takes a lot to ask any question, let alone a spiritual question. So there's our big takeaways. Um, hope everybody enjoyed this one. It was not nearly as heavy as some of the other ones we've done, but just as important in a lot of aspects with today's world and the way that heathenry, Asatru, Odinism, whatever you want to call them, is changing. It is changing, and it's adapting quickly. And this is a question that I get asked a lot. It comes up in almost every every time I'm out and about doing ghosty stuff. It comes up. So this is a big one. So I hope you enjoyed it. We had fun talking about it. You yes, learned a few did. things about us. You learned that uh, White likes dessert Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I love Pop-Tarts. I love some Pop-Tarts, not all. I actually when I get in Pop-Tarts. But... Cool. Um, I don't. Know, I don't know our Instagram handles to drop knowledge right now for following and shit. It's all New Uppsala. Okay, so is it at New Uppsala? Is that you look on Instagram? I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. We're a thousand. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> We're good at social media. Can you tell? Well, um... I was going to end up being like, hey, you know, reach out, ask questions. Like, obviously, none of us give a fuck about our life, so we're open books. So you can ask us any question, embarrassing <laughs> or not, religious or not. We don't give a shit. We keep people anonymous, including, well, not including ourselves. We're very mean to each other. Um, but we'll keep you anonymous and everything with it. I don't know the social media, so I'm going to say at New Uppsala. Yep. What's the, I think, is I that what it is? It is on our Facebook and our Instagram are linked. I don't. Do we have a Twitter? Yes, we have a Twitter. It's at oh, New Uppsala. Yeah, I made a whole we post do? about it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm How trying. How is it? Is it going well? No, not really. What's <laughs> on Twitter? But anyways, yeah. Um, you can just look up New Uppsala, or if you want to email at us, you can email me directly, and I'll get into contact with the other two. Uh, at newupsala raven at gmail.com that's spelled n e w u p p s a l a raven at gmail.com raven spelled r a v e n there we go is it now you can't really fuck it up i have zero faith in humanity as a whole so well if you email the wrong address it's not going to get to me yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we have a, if you're, 
YouTube, just put them down in the comments. We got a Facebook, New Uppsala Facebook page. We have a Twitter account at New Uppsala. We have a Instagram account, which is New Uppsala. And then... I have a New Uppsala email too, apparently. It's, it's New Uppsala Sentinel at Gmail. Look at that. Oh, wow. We all got Ooh. emails for it business. Is. Sigvidirulfar.newupsala at gmail.com. So, how do you, s- how do you spell, spell Sigvidir? S I G V I D I R Ulfar U L F A R. You might have so many A's and S's and shit in it. <laughs> New Uppsala. There's already multiple. Sentinel. So it goes just this little session. P P S A L A S E. What the fuck? N T I N E. Oh my god, that's a lot. That's awful. Yeah, that's, I, that's a I, lot. I, but yeah, now you guys have our emails. Go rewind if you want those. But yeah. Um, anyways, you can reach out to any of us. Technically, we're open books. Shoot us an email. Shoot us a message through the Facebook page or Instagram or. However, social media works now. God, I feel old as shit, dude. I've never had my own personal Instagram, I don't think. So this is cool. Instagram. I don't have a Facebook anymore. That's and I've never had a TikTok or. Uh, uh, oh my god! I almost just called it a cricket. It's a Twitter. <laughs> I don't even know. You're, I don't even know where I am. Right. You're gonna now call Facebook MySpace, and that's <laughs> right, conclusion well. of the new Uppsala podcast. And ended the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>